If you already suffer from colorophobia, this figure isn't going to help much. Here's your look though at the new NECA Toys It's Ultimate Pennywise Wellhouse figure. Seven young outcasts band together to battle an ancient shape-shifting evil that emerges every 27 years to prey on the town's children. We're going to go ahead and get the measurements going for Pennywise. By the way, colorophobia is a fear of clowns. I have colorophobia, I think, myself as well sometimes. Don't like clowns. The recent It's, the remake It, certainly did not help matters. And certainly a figure like this from NECA Toys is not helping much either. Needless to say, we will push forward. I will face my fears to give you hopefully the best review that I possibly can. That being said, the figure is going to stand 7.6. Six, 7.6 inches in height, which in centimeters, going and doing that right now, you're looking at a figure about 20 centimeters, about 20 centimeters, 19.4, 19.4 to be exact. And because the mob asks, this humbled reviewer is more than happy to oblige. Here's what the Wellhouse Pennywise looks like stacked up against the original Pennywise clown that we had gotten. The only uh, comparison I didn't put in this review, or not planning to put in this review, FYI, is going to be the GameStop exclusive version of Pennywise, because essentially it's basically the same figure as this one right here, just with some extra blood added to it. I think the faces are roughly about the same. There's been, of course, some conversation about it, the fact that the faces are slightly different, but pretty much it's this figure right here. You can see that the bodies are pretty much identical to one another. There's not really much that's been changed from one figure to the other, where if most all the changes have been done, have certainly been done to the head. And we'll look at the various different head swapped options as this review will progress. But just to kind of show you from head to toe, it does in fact look to be the exact same figure. I thought maybe like the gray would have been slightly different on this one when I was taking it out of packaging. But then again, when I'm putting it next to this one, it's about the same. You could maybe argue the point that the torso section of uh, of this outfit of his certainly is a little bit maybe lighter. As you can see next to one another, this feels like it might be slightly a little bit darker and dirtier. But those are the two figures side by side. And uh, we'll just quickly, let me just quickly show you the various heads from this one to this one right here. Somebody very careless with their collection, just simply throwing these into a tote loose. Uh, you could easily pinpoint which one, which heads belong to which figures. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. So the initial Pennywise the Clown, as we've already had a look at him in it, hopefully in an extensive review, came with three interchangeable heads. Let me go ahead and grab those right now. Of the three head sculpts, kind of digging this one is my personal favorite. But it does definitely have a very unique, almost original look to it, especially with the hair. The hair having those sweeps to the side and slightly redder in, in coloring. When you compare it, say, for example, immediately to the head sculpts that come included with Wellhouse, not only is the hair much rougher, but it's a lot lighter as well. So you can know right away. This one is the Wellhouse figure head sculpts. This one is the one that came with the original Pennywise the Clown. I might also say too that Wellhouse's Pennywise happens to inhabit more the scarier looks for Pennywise the Clown. Don't get me wrong, I again feel like both of these are terrifying, but certainly not to the level I think that the Wellhouse figure does possess. So again, here are the head sculpts that came included with the original figure. Here again is one of the, I don't know if this was the defaulted head, I believe it was the defaulted head. I probably will switch it out though to the smiling head sculpt myself. But those are the various head sculpts that come included with this particular figure. Let's have a look at some of the other accessories before we get to the real scarier ends of this review. Uh, it does come included with the fence post, the fence post which will play a key, a pivotal key, uh, key when it comes to displaying one of the head sculpts. Stay tuned for that. You can't help but notice, I can't help but notice, there's a little bit of additional burgundy 
that's been added to this section right here. Possibly maybe the indicator of blood. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. This is very thin plastic, so be careful of this. It also becomes very problematic when it comes to putting them into something else. Stay tuned for that. I'm leaving you guys hanging here. Certainly not hanging from the grips of Pennywise, or potentially hanging from the grips of Pennywise. We have a slightly revealed hand. He has revealed his hand, and will reveal his hand even further when we sort of see, not one of its true forms, but I guess, I don't know if it's going to have the spider look that it's going to have from like the original uh, televised uh, Pennywise serial that, of course, had Tim Curry as Pennywise the Clown. In that movie, the kids in, in their elder states battle Pennywise, who has now taken the form of a spider. Its actual form is sort of more of a glowing orb, but will be interesting to see what other forms the new Pennywise will take. Possibly a precursor is this hand right here, which, as you can see, has now more sort of slightly elongated fingers ripping their way through the fingertipped sections of his glove which can be swapped out for his interchangeable hand options which are right here but will also include a pair of these hands right here which as i can only guess it it kind of looks like it either would be the hands that would be holding the fence post or i guess you could also have used these hands also for the balloon from the previous release talk a little bit about that in a second as well i won't talk about the heads just yet i'm going to save it because i certainly want to talk a little bit about this figure first and foremost primarily with the head sculpt that's currently in its socket now this is a terrifying sight to see something again i may have been a little critical about with its initial release from NECA toys that i thought the head sculpts as good as they may be this one being the scariest of the batch I, I think even in that review had said the, the one head sculpt that I really wanted this figure to have, and I can only hope that future figures will have it, is the big, devilish, several rows of teeth smile that he has in the film. By far, in my opinion, one of the scariest looks of this clown. Uh, captured in a very scary, accurate way, Nakatoys has done a really eerie job of recreating this in plastic form. I love the fact that the eyes are kind of looking up. So if you tilt the head down, you can see that it is looking right at you. It is looking, it's looking right at me. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty scary. Of course, it's got all the decayed kind of cracks that are happening at the top of its head. Uh, much longer flowing now, more orange hairstyle to the otherwise more darker orange that we had with the initial release. This is sort of, again, this is what I'm talking about when it comes to the NECA uh, Pennywise figures. These are This is the head sculpt I was really wanting from day one. And now physically seeing it didn't disappoint one bit. Of course, we could easily talk about the rest of the figure's uh, makeup, but if you've already, again, picked up the original Pennywise, the clown, I feel as if like I'm touching on territories that we've already been there. We've already done that. Uh, he does have the more vintage sort of uh, clown outfit here, a corset, if you will, and skirts. A very different take of Pennywise the Clown from the film, and I kind of like that they went this route versus the Pennywise that we saw in the televised the series, the five-parter, four-parter series that made it to TV, where that was more of a traditional clown, something of which that could e easily blend into the crowd and look like any other clown. This Pennywise looks very distinctly different and sort of pulled from time, pulled from a like a back past that perhaps we don't want to tread in. I love the little frilled sleeves, which again carried over from the original figure, the cuffed on the collar. This frilled collar, still a loose appliance. You'll probably see a little bit more about that when we talk about the interchangeable head options. Uh, the torso waist, uh, again, has the pom-poms running down the top torso and connecting in a row of three down right, right around the waist section right here. This is made of a slightly softer plastic, and as we make down our way to the boots, you can see those pom-poms once again are added to the boots. Tried and true, very happy. I love the figure initially, but I sort of feel like this one is the upgrade to that, the next evolutionary step of Pennywise. Supposedly we're getting another Pennywise after this as well. Certainly would be a debatable topic as to why we simply couldn't have gotten all these head sculpts. But again, that's a lot of head sculpts. Three with the original, four with this one. And I think the new one has possibly three or four head sculpts all on its own as well. One thing that Pennywise certainly does have in this 
film is various different looks, so it would make sense that NECA would want to get every single look down, and logically, even though it kind of, you know, is a counter-argument to what I've just initially said, it would make logical sense that they would release multiple figures versus one figure and packed with like 10 different head sculpts. What are those other head sculpts, by the way? Well, let's have a look at those right now. The other head sculpt included with this figure is the hair swept from that slideshow that we saw during the film. Again, a really scary scene. All of the scenes equally scary to one another, but this is sort of where the hairs, as the slide is moving, the hair, as you can see, is moving away from the face, revealing Pennywise's head underneath there. I would say it's likely one of the less scary head sculpts, scary head sculpts, though the scene is very terrifying. One of the less scary head sculpts that come included with this figure. They're all pegged the exact same way. I will show you how those peg into place in a second. Next, we also have this head sculpt right here, sort of the deformed headpiece to Pennywise. Similar enough, yet couldn't quite be very much difficult, uh, different from this one right here. It sort of has the elongated jaw as if it's stretching out from itself. Even like the eyes become distorted as the mouth sort of goes beyond the point of having a normal humanoid looking face. Some people like this head sculpt right here. I still feel like I'm going to go with this one as my defaulted on the shelf look. Maybe when I put it on the shelf, I'll face it this way. So I don't have to see. I'm only kidding. I don't like clowns, though. Uh, the last head sculpt is a rather interesting one and kind of plays clues and cues to the initial fence post that we had a look at. We have this one right here with, once again, a distorted headpiece, but it's distorted by what happens in the film. Of course, the fence post somehow finds its way thump, right through Pennywise's head. Now, you can still mimic this through the plastic release of Pennywise. You'll see one side does have a spike. The other, or the rest of the length, rather, is just a smooth rod. Now, if you want to fit this in place, you'll want to take it on this side. But I think most of the images have it on this side rather than the opposite way. This would be doing yourself a service, I think, if you, you try this a good couple of times just to make sure you know which angle this goes through. Because this is the kind of piece that you certainly don't want to get broken. And when you are putting it through, just be very, very careful. Put enough pressure where you feel like you're not bending it. And certainly put enough pressure that if you feel like you're going the wrong angle, stop immediately. Rethink your path, my friend. And then you'll eventually get a look that looks like this. Very, very cool. Very creepy. Very disturbing. Uh, again, of the three head sculpts, of these three interchangeable head sculpts, I like this one, but I think my default go-to is still gonna be like this head sculpt right here. And just to show you how those head pieces remove, I'm gonna grab the torso piece, or more importantly, the collar that's at the top of the, col the torso. I'm just gonna pop off the head. And uh, I also like the fact that NECA has now switched, I mentioned this in several reviews already, to a more narrow cylinder post rather than a big bulbous bowl joint. Find the head that you want to switch it out to, still hold on to the torso, and apply some moderate levels of pressure, giving you this head sculpt right here. The only, advise, the only advisement I would make as a reviewer to you guys watching is I would put this head sculpt on, if this is the head that you want to use, put it on before you slide the post through. As certainly you're going to be probably more inclined to put your hands on the side. You don't want to bend those in any way, shape, or form. Put the head sculpt on first, then feed the, the rod straight through. Straight through the noggin, just like that. So let's have a look at the guy's articulation, and uh, certainly we'll wrap up this review here. His head sculpt rotates all the way around. Now sometimes, this is a good example right here, it did it for me. When you are rotating the head sculpt, depending on which head that you go with, this is probably one of the worst examples I could have gone with because it has the longer hair. As you're rotating it, it sort of wants to catch on it. If you're using like shorter head pieces, for example, where the hair doesn't, as it clears a little bit more of the collar, you're gonna have less problems doing this. But the head rotates all the way around, sometimes will pop off the peg. That's certainly not a big, big issue. But some of the heads afford a little bit more posability than others, like this one would hinge up and down. So let's pop this head sculpt off, feeling like we want to do true justice and service to this. The head moves up and down, and again, doesn't give you a super amount of clearance, rotates left and right, and it rocks slightly back and forth. 
but again, as you rotate the head, it's it's by natural uh, circumstances that it's just going to catch on the collar. So just be aware of that. The upper torso does have a ball joint. It rotates all the way around, hinges up and down, left and right. The sleeves or shoulders of the the length arms here, the arms hinge out to about there. The cuffs of the tops of the sleeves, by nature only, of course, will get stuck and in the way. So that's out as the arms will go. However, you can rotate the arms all the way around. There goes the there goes the head. Uh, rotates all the way around. We'll retrieve that. We'll retrieve that. Uh, the arms rotate back and forth. You've got the double hinge happening in the elbows, and the hands rotate all the way around. I didn't really talk too much about it, but he does also have gripping hands, as you can see right here. Kind of looks creepy to you know what? Let's add a head. Let's add a head back for the time being. There we go. Uh, the gripping hands, like I said, uh, these are the defaulted out of the packaging, but again, if you want to use these hands right here for possibly pulling out the post, you can do that as well. The legs split out. Luckily, there's enough clearance at the top there or on the underside of this skirt where you can move the legs forward and back, and they're not that restricted. The swiveling the leg actually occurs right around the knee area. It doesn't seem like it swivels too much up at the top there. He has a double hinge happening in the knee. There's one, and the other one is just up at the top. It's a little stiffer. Let's try on this side. There's one, and there's the other one. There's the other one. Just a little stiff on the joints. I'd rather a stiff joint on these figures than overly loose joints. Uh, this also swivels down below. The feet hinge back and forth, and they also rock back and forth as an ankle pivot. Whatever choice you go with, let me just correct and get this guy all situated and ready to stand. There we go. Whatever choice you go with for the Wellhouse release of Pennywise, one thing is certainly clear. It's a scary release and a successful release from the folks over at NECA Toys, further cementing the idea that this new Pennywise is a terrifying release both on screen and now here in plastic form. Despite negative criticisms that a remake of It Was Even Necessary, the film was released and surprised many moviegoers by realizing that it could be scary. Even not to say that the original miniseries wasn't scary on TV, but the film from the It 2017 film certainly took that to the next level, giving us a very terrifying portrayal of the demonic clown known as Pennywise. NECA has now given us a second release of Pennywise, giving us some new head options for how you can display the figure. Even though in theory you could swap these head pieces out to the original one that we had received, so if you like so much the heads that came included with the Wellhouse version, you can most definitely use those head sculpts, those head pieces, with the original Pennywise as well, and have those two distinct looks using the head sculpts from this figure release. The one thing I like about this figure is that it does give you all the scarier looks of Pennywise, the one that I feel, the ones that I feel that the original figure just didn't possess. While I did like the default heads, the smiling head and the neutral heads piece, the scarier head sculpt that came included with that figure I think just didn't cut it for me. The one I really wanted was the big demonic smile and I'm glad that this figure did include that as well as a few extra deliciously devilish uh, bonuses as well. Um, I think this is a case where the figure does require a, a re-release or in the sense in this case that we're getting a second helping of Pennywise. I don't feel as if NECA could have found a way around this. I initially, I did feel like the head sculpts that came included with this figure could have simply included with the original figure, but then we would have an X number of head sculpts, and then the price, of course, for the figure would have increased. Uh, we are still, as far as I know, getting ourselves another Pennywise that, again, will have even more head sculpts further to the ones that we've already looked at right here. There's enough interchangeable options available for really both figures, with a third one included, that you could display Pennywise at any one of the looks that he had in the film. Now, I can only hope, though, that as the film series progresses, uh, we'll also get some more devilish ways that Pennywise will look in the films, and maybe NECA will also expand on that and give us future Pennywise figures also. Just an FYI, I hope we also get ourselves the crabbed-armed, crabbed leg Pennywise, or even the one that had the cool kind of hands coming out of its mouth. If they can pull that off, NECA, like I said, always pulls off figures like this for movie interpretations. I'm sure they're going to come out at some point with Pennywise looking in that look also.
Either way, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, I don't know if the original Pennywise is still available in most comic book stores, but I know the one, the Wellhouse one that we're looking at right now just came out. So you should be able to find it right now in retail stores and comic book stores alike. If you can't find a comic book shop in your area, by the way, you can also go to www.comicshoplocator.com, put in your zip code, put in your postal code, bingo, bango, you'll find a comic book store in your area. Worked for me. Stay tuned, guys, because we're going to have more videos coming your way soon. Some more NECA reviews are also coming soon to this channel. So lots of devilish stuff coming your way. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below, and I'll see you guys next time.